unseen. A dwelling of pure thought shaping our futures. The dream web. Watched over by servants, billions of years old. For centuries, the dream web has been stable. But now, evil is about to take control. Keepers, the web of dreams is slowly unwinding. The seven evil powers on earth are joining forces. If they become too strong, the dream web will be destroyed. Who will be the deliverer? When will it be? We must not let the web be broken. Silence! The Chosen Ones are becoming aware. If they discover their powers, they will become too strong. Has the seed been planted? Yes, it has grown strong and he is stirring. The time has come and I shall awaken him. This is the future. I know what you want from me. I think I understand now. The Seven are becoming stronger. They've haunted my dreams. I know. They control the Seven Points of the Dream Web. Must they be destroyed? Yes. I can feel they are all close to me. Who will be the first? His name is Crane. He is the weakest of the seven. How will I find him? He is very near. Arm yourself and begin your search. Time is running short, my brother. This is Dreamweb, a really dark atmospheric adventure game. I played this many years ago on the Amiga, probably more than once all the way through, and then later uh, when I had a PC on DOS, and probably again on DOSBox even later, and here I am playing it again. This is another continuing classic. Dreamweb. So you play as Ryan, this very disturbed man who's been having bad dreams. He's just woken up from a nightmare next to his girlfriend Eden. Your girlfriend Eden lies in the bed with her eyes half closed and the covers pulled tightly around her. Her dark hair spills out over the pillow. She has a slight frown on her face. Eden opens her eyes slightly and gives you a smile. Concern shows in her eyes. Eden, I feel terrible. You feel so hot. Your skin is soaking wet. You were dreaming again last night. It scares me when you shout out so loud. I thought the dreams had gone away, but last night was worse than ever. 
and I, I don't think it's just bad dreams. What do you mean, not just dreams? It all seems so real and so vivid. My, my mind is telling me to do things that I don't want to do. You have to stop talking like this. You need to see a doctor. I'm so worried about you. I'll be okay. I just need to sort some things out in my mind. Look, it's late. You better get to work or Sparky will be mad with you. We'll talk more when you get back. Alright. But you will be here when I get back, won't you? Of course I will. I'll always be here for you. Now hurry up. You don't want to be any later than you already are. I don't deserve you, Eden. Let's get my wallet. A brown leather wallet with your initials in the corner. The clasp hangs limply off the leather, and the wallet has seen better days. Now, time to put the shades on. Oh, wait. A battered pair of plastic black sunglasses that you've had for ages. The smog outside really lets through enough light, rarely lets through enough light to make them necessary. But you wear them anyway most of the time. You feel much better. Eden's bedroom doubles as a study. Opposite the bed is a desk with a, with a computer console on it. There's a huge window in one wall of the room, giving a view across the city. Let's look out the window. The huge window offers a view of the city outside, as it is battered by wind and rain. The old Victorian buildings are dwarfed by the modern skyscrapers in between them. Victorian? So we're in England. Cigarettes? A bright orange packet of synthetic cigarettes you've been trying to give up for ages. This isn't the time to take them. Time to go to work. What's happened to the cooker? Eda's micro cooker looks completely burnt out. The door hangs limply off one hinge, and the inside is blackened with soot. Oh, look at that. Oops. There's something strange in the microwave. A heavy gold key that is about four inches long. There is a design carved into the handle, and there are strange markings along the barrel. How strange. A square metal plate on the wall has a small button set into it. The writing has faded, but you can just about make out the word open written on it. You give the button a press, and the door opens. Large lift control battle? Yeah, it's good. Examine the controls and click down, down for the ground floor. The lift takes you slowly down to the garage beneath Eden's apartment. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, red herrings in this game. Lots of objects you can pick up that you don't really need. I'm not sure if we need this wrench. I don't think we do. Only rag, also manual, screwdriver. I think we'll need a screwdriver. Eden's has obviously had some car trouble <laughs> and she's been repairing it herself. Yeah. Raining outside. It's always raining outside. Okay, time to go to work. Sparky's Bar, the bane of your life. The place is a mess, people are unfriendly, and the pay is pathetic. Everything that could be wrong with a job is wrong with this one. The guy's just sitting outside in the rain. In the pouring rain outside Sparky's Bar lays a totally unconscious man. 
He wears a brown suit that is stained and torn from months of sleeping rough. The man is surrounded by empty beer bottles. As you approach, the man doesn't stir. Hey, wake up. There is still no response from the man. His face rests in a pool of rainwater. Can you hear me? There's still no sign of movement. Perhaps he isn't even alive. Ugh. This is a dark, nasty world. Dystopian future if ever we saw one. Now Sparky, my employer. Sparky is stood behind the bar. Obviously he has no staff available and has to work himself. Sparky is overweight and scruffy. His belly pokes out from beneath his grey shirt. He doesn't look very happy. Sparky looks up at you and says, Hey Ryan, did you get my mail net message? No, sorry. I mean, sorry I'm late. That's okay. No problem at all. Really? Yeah, you're fired. If you bothered to read my message, you would know by now. You can't do that. I, I really need the money. Sorry, Ryan. I can't use unreliable staff. Look, I'm sorry. I've, I've been having a few problems sleeping recently. I'll try and pull myself together. I'll tell you what I'll do. Take a couple of weeks off and try to sort yourself out. You aren't any good to me like this. Thanks, I really appreciate it. Do you think I could have my wages? Well, I guess so, even though I've ended up having to work behind the bar myself. Just run your card through the scanner. Okay, a and I promise I'll sort myself out. Sparky looks at you expectantly. Perhaps you should do as he said. Okay. Let's open up the wallet. Take out the cash card. The card scanning device allows Sparky to deduct from and add money to cash cards. You take your card and place the thumb across the metal press your thumb across the metal strip. Sparky comes over and types something into the scanner. You sweep your card through the slot in the machine and it adds two weeks' wages to the balance on the card. Cool. Examine the monitor. The network monitor that is switched permanently into TV mode. The monitor shows a music channel. You can't reach the controls and Sparky has lost the remote. Okay, let's talk to this guy. Sat at the bar is a large man who is smoking a cigarette. He stares across the bar impassively and occasionally glances at the TV. He looks as if he's having a really bad time. Talk to the guy. The man takes a puff of his cigarette and asks you what's up. Mind if I sit next to you? Do what you like, I don't care. Thanks, what's on TV? Oh, it's a program about that singer, David Crane. W what about him? He's playing some concert or other. He's just arrived in town. Where's he staying? At a hotel called the Regency. Hey, what is this anyway? Why all the questions? Oh, no reason. The Regency is it's that big place near the bridge, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Now why don't you shut up and leave me alone? It's okay. I found out what I needed to know. Thanks, Sparky. Your money will go to good use.